Al Nico build in that it hasn't actually been shown on stage in the LCS yeah. yet, but it has become very popular in solo queue as well as scrims. Scary. Yeah, Nico has just become <laughs> essentially a perma ban. This on hit style so incredibly strong. We are going to see a Galio though, which we're expecting to be down to smoothie in the support. We have not really been seeing any right. solo link Galio for quite some time, but it is something that can kind of scale up and give a lot of utility, a lot of power in the team fight stage, especially. Mm -hmm. But I do think it can be punished. We'll see if Optic wants to try to go aggressive in that bottom lane to punish it. As they showed yesterday, they, they can do with picks like that Callista. Most likely matching with another support pick as Tom Kench is left up. Big will take that under control to keep Arrow safe. Also one to try Callista in that bot lane. We'll see the hover is what is second pick here for Optic Gaming. Figuring could be strong early game. What will it be? Draven would be an interesting one. This was an arrow signature pick in the past, so wouldn't mm -hmm. be shocked to see it. I do think it also is going to give you a lot of that laning power against the Galio. Galio is very weak, I think, in the, some of the early levels here in lane, so yeah. it's something that could be punished. Certainly, Tom Kench is going to be able to give Draven the ability to play more aggressive because he can devour you up if you do get taunted by the Galio, if you're actually getting attacked there. Uh, but it is not really a, a support that always has the most kill pressure unless your opponents kind of opt into that fight, yep. right? If they are sitting back and trying to stay away from you, it's harder to actually get fully stacked up to try to play aggressive and, and finish off a kill. We'll see if they can play it on that bot side, though. Kadian wants to lock him in place. Cataclysm will be going down around Arrow this game and his Draven, so better be big right on his backside to save him with that Tom Kench. A lot of aggression already from TSM, and it shows when these guys can hit R at level 6 and beyond, it is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Ezreal picked up here for Sven as he can scale up to that fight point too, but also get some of that damage and stay safe from Arrow in lane. Yeah, he wants to be able to try to play that pretty far back, but that being said, you know, you're not expecting Galio Ezreal to have any lane presence really in the 2v2 against the Draven and Tom Kench. Yeah. They should be running the show on the bottom side, you know, unless there's someone going to be able to come down, roam down there, or get some early ganks to really shake things up. Now, that would be kind of the game changer, but certainly Ezreal, someone who wants to scale up, who wants to have that time to be able to get those double tiers stacking. And Zven has been so effective on the champion. Three and one so far, this split on it has been one of his better champs, but very often he's been paired up with kind of some of the more defensive supports who, who something like a Tom Kench that has yeah. more safety. Though Galio still is very good at healing. Expect the mids to be pinched as we already see that Lissandra coming out. Yeah. Crown, a 9-0-0 zero and zero Corky game yesterday. Goes for the Blanc. First pick phase around. Says, I want it. I see the Jarvan. I can get away from that. I can outplay Galio and Ezreal. He's feeling confident. We'll see if he can get the King Me this game. Lee Sin banned out for TSM as we're back on Optic's side. And it's actually his first LeBlanc play of the split here. He has played a lot of different champion, bringing out, you know, this is his ninth unique so far, I do believe, if I have wow. those numbers right. So certainly, you know, showing us a lot of different picks. Now bringing out the LeBlanc. If they have banned away the, the Lissandra. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Syndra getting taken away from Bjergsen, as that, you know, can be a, a pretty strong matchup. He doesn't want that, that Bjergsen. Point click. <laughs> yeah, Bjergsen has been so good on the Syndra career-wise. But Rise, as you say, point-and-click CC when comboed up with the Jarvan makes it really impossible to avoid that flag and drag. And that is something that we've been seeing a lot of teams trying to kind of work around with the Blanc. They want to avoid that CC. Yeah. So especially for later stages of the game, you can distort in, get some poke damage down, distort out without being in a under enough threat to really kind of just get burst down. You're talking about how Doflo was kind of able to fight for himself in the side lane. It was on that Yorick yesterday mm -hmm. that TSM just banned. So we're looking for something in the top lane and in the jungle here for Optic. And Dardock may say, I want to see the entire team before we get that pick. In. Yeah, huh. yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. But at the same time, leaving that solo lane counter pick can be quite strong. And, and we know J4 could be flexed top or jungle still. We are expecting it to it's be jungle, point. but it is just going to be kind of consistency out of the jungle here from Dardock grabbing up that Sejuani. This is a very, very solid pick coming across here from him. Going to give them some additional initiation. Uh, also does pair up very well with melee style top laners. If you want to pick up carry style top for Dokla, be able to proc that passive very, very quickly. Vladimir, perhaps the pick, yep. but Corky, you know, another pretty strong answer. Will be Vlad. This again could be flexed mid yep. or top. We kind of have to see what the final pick will be for TSM. Ooh. Yasuo possibly coming out. Threats all over. Flashing the Akali coming through. This will be Smoothie's first 
Galio game as it comes down to him. Corky's gonna go to that mid lane, I believe, and we are gonna have Bjergsen on Corky coming through this time. So Crown knows exactly what he's up against. Yeah, so it should be a blind Vladimir top. We'll see what the answer will be for Dokla and if he can actually carve himself out an advantage up on that top side. Mm. Very heavy magic damage profile kind of coming through from TSM. Yes, Ezreal does have physical oh. damage. A high amount of magic damage from the Ezreal of uh, Vladimir and Corky, as well as the Galio. Going to be a lot of magic damage there, too. We'll see if Akkadian is going full tank. He's not going to be bringing a huge amount of physical damage threat. So right. I do think there is an ability for, for people like Dardoch to really kind of uh, kind of hedge their bets and go heavily towards magic resist. Even someone like this Aurelia could go for an early wit's end or even a, you know, a hex drinker a little bit later on if he wants to rush Triforce. So there is optimizations they can make to really try to stay safe against what is going to be a huge amount of magic damage coming from this TSM squad. And Aurelia plus Sejuani, I feel, is one of the strongest 2v2s that you can have up on the top side of the map in the game. You can set up for that stun coming through with Aurelia by actually knocking them up with the Sejuani Q, getting the Sejuani passive down very quickly with these two melee champions hitting it up and stacking it up. So Broken Blade and Acadian are going to have to play carefully and play very well on that top side of the map because Dokla on this Aurelia certainly has the potential to take over. It leads me to my next question, uh, Azale, is you know, across the map for Optic, does this favor their early game aggression that they like to play towards? Is every lane a threat for them? I definitely think so. You're looking at Draven in the bottom lane. You're looking at this LeBlanc, who is going Ignite, can play very aggressively. And then you have drafted this super strong 2v2 top lane with the Sejuani and the Aurelia. They had counterpick, given that red side that they selected on the top side of the map. So this is certainly some Heavy potential to snowball here for Optic if they can get it going early. Optic six and seven in the standings versus TSM's eight and five. Both teams coming off a win yesterday and obviously want to end this weekend on a win. I'm sure the TSM fans are ready to see that, but Optic switching up the roster back and forth are looking to find success here in the last few weeks. And I think if Optic can't get any sort of an early lead and and you're looking into you know the team fight stage later on tsm has a monstrous team fight with double marksmen they have incredible engage here so we'll see and we're going to get a quick sideline report with sabatine to see how optics feeling coming into this game thanks guys coach sabatine wanted to ask you we see dardok in against tsm today why is he the player to play um, Josh is bringing other options than, than Will in terms of draft and picks. I think that it's hard for the enemy team to expect what he's going to play. I remember the Jade jungle. So it's always put an extra pressure. His playstyle is kind of different in the way he's in interacting with other players as well. So I thought it was a good choice, but Will is as ready. I think we are like the same level of team whether Josh or Midios are playing right now. Well, thank you and wishing you and the team the best of luck. Back to you guys. Definitely interesting, you know, talking about even the pressure that they kind of add and the respect that you have to give to these different champion pools in draft. Certainly Sejuani, something that Meteos or Darda could play. You know, not a kind of crazy pick there by any means, but, you know, they do have different play styles and it does have to change the sort of game plan you know, you're going to go into this with as TSM. It was interesting to see even some of the higher teams like Cloud9 coming into this uh, few weeks with a pass change. Blabber came in, everybody's kind of flexing to see with the Rek'Sai coming back into play. And I like the fact that Optic feels is that it's the same level of teamwork they'll get, but a different variety out of the play. Yeah, and I think historically, it's fair to say that jungle is where we've seen the most success, even worldwide, mm -hmm. with rotating players in and out, right? Because you can even have, when you're getting into to playoffs and you're getting to best of series, you know, the junglers sitting with the coach, trying to analyze the jungle paths that are happening, right. tendencies that are happening, and trying to get advantages there. Ooh, nice few hits, good catches as they gets in front of Arrow to get those stop attacks on the Mystic Shots. And Smoothie, like I said, first Galio back and forth. We'll see how he plays this. And this is Klepto Draven. So you know, popping the W, that's going to give you the, yep. the ability to pop those Klepto procs. And we saw this actually yesterday, I do believe, from Deathly. So playing that same style of setup. And if you can actually have a successful early lane phase with this, not only are you getting potentially the gold from your passive with the cash in, but you're also getting more Klepto gold. And we have all experienced those games where <laughs> Draven gets to an early BT and just feels like you cannot stop him. The hope here with Kleptomancy is that you get there even faster, that you're getting all that additional gold so and can thing. really take over with those early items. Early level two already pushed in, gonna have to fight with aggression under the turret here if Optic continues to add pressure. And doesn't even look like Acadian can make a stomp down just yet. Made three uh, ward down, but still needs his jungle. So here goes big. And 
Arrow is off to a great start. See if Sven Ooh. can clean these up. Bjerk's in low and mid lane. His crown is also getting that aggression on. The threats are working for Optic early. Yeah, and Bjergsen still has a, a lot of potions he can kind of charge up here with that Corrupting Potion, but he does have to be careful because if you get too low, Crown did not expend the Ignite. And that's why Bjergsen's yeah. having to give the respect here to actually step back off the turret, give up a few of those CS because he's waiting for Fleet to heal him back up. He's waiting for these two Corruption Potions that he actually popped Ooh. to heal him back up, knowing that if you step up too low on health, Crown could get a solo kill. We saw what he could do with the lead yesterday. <laughs> so certainly not the guy you want to put in that winning position. Even before his Corky game, we remember the Rise game just mm -hmm. before as well. He was playing it against, now I'm going to forget. But he was just hiding in the brush, trying to get the kills down. Making oh, here he play. goes. Goes in for it. One last shot back. It's heated. <laughs> Bjergsen getting a kill. First blood going over as well, and they trade. One for one. I think that was the first blood for Crown, it though. Was. So it Crown, for Crown gets the extra gold there. And the minion wave is actually much better for Crown. But it is TP advantage for Bjergsen, and he did not blow his flash. So we'll see if he can actually Ooh. reset this before Crown gets in the mid lane. I think he will be able to reset that wave. So pretty even trade overall. But it is summoner advantage for Bjergsen. And here this is one more time. Crown playing this so aggressive, trying to get this early edge. Utilize the ignite that he has. He hits the Q, distorts forward, connects with the chain, and he just commits to it, tanking multiple turret shots, flashing forward to keep that chain leashed. And the last tower shot does knock him down, but Bjergsen... Ooh. No, Bjergsen actually Bjergsen got first blood there. He did have 400 gold, so certainly better for Bjergsen on the trade. Woo. Very, very close, though, and super aggressive plays. You honestly don't see a lot of that these days, where people are willing to take those huge risks to go for that solo kill. Mm -hmm. 1v1, it's not like summoners have been forced. It's not like anything else had been really happening. And look how defensive the buy is here from Bjergsen. He picks up a Ruby Crystal and a, a, null, null, magic. a null Magic Mantle there, really not wanting uh, to fall prey to this early game here from Crown. Keeping these minions nice and low so you can farm it up. 38 to 29, so Bjergsen's still well within farm there and within pressure in the lane. What a fiery start to that mid lane between Crown and Bjerg as Optic, Arrow, and Big are still pushed up on this Draven and Tom Kench bot lane. Smooth as Galio and Sven's Ezreal having a tough time here cleaning up, but they're staying within just the CS wave. And as long as they're not giving up a lot of turret plates, as long as they're not actually giving up a big CS deficit, it's not going to be the biggest deal. You certainly do expect Optic to run this yep. lane in the 2v2, and they have done so thus far. But if they don't cash in, if they don't get turret plates, well, Ezreal's going to scale up, Galio's going to be great in the team fights, and it's not going to really result in in much of a difference. Oh, this is just going to be as a matter of fact play. Yeah, you saw us, but it doesn't matter. It seems like Crown might still be roaming down according to TSM's vision. Yeah, exactly. They don't really see. So just that pressure alone, my guess is that he's actually gone back mm -hmm. towards the mid lane now. But that alone got them a turret plate, denied a couple CS from Sven. So that pressure was certainly worthwhile. And really, what did he lose in the mid lane? Maybe a melee Bjergsen's minion? Bjergsen's not going to push that. Yeah, exactly. Because Bjergsen doesn't know where that vision is either. They yeah. really don't have a lot of TSM wards on that side of the map, which means that they're pretty vulnerable. I mean, you can actually look and, and you can see the bottom side jungle here. There's not a lot of TSM vision. And now they're trying to actually get out there and, and reclaim some, which is why you have Acadian over there and you have Tom Ketch moving up, trying to kind of cover these areas uh, to give Bjergsen that freedom to push and to keep that bot lane feeling safe. So nobody knows the future, but do we have a kind of clip or do you want to see Optic work at a certain rate to get something next? Yeah, I think you want to see Optic continue to push the pace, right? I don't, I don't think that there's a certain time where yeah. it's like 15 minutes or you lose, but I think that they should be playing around this bottom lane pressure. Okay. The TP, I think, throws a bit of the wrench in the gears here or there, as, as Sven has gotten a really good recall with Tier Sheen. So now the recall timings are a bit off, but I think that after this recall, you should see Arrow and Big reestablish bot lane pressure. You should see them moving towards the Mountain Drake and using that as a way to threaten potential neutral deck. Katie and Todd, Gokla trying to get out. He's going to be going down as Broken Blade picks up that kill. He was not expecting aggression from those two of TSM. Yeah, really nice job from Akkadian getting up there and turning that one very heavily in Broken Blade's favor. Dokla with that early build, he's going to be going towards the wit's end with that recurve bow, certainly. And I think this is very, very strong in the 1v1. But what that does mean is you have no HP whatsoever in your build, so you're going to be even more vulnerable to the early physical damage that's coming out here from the Jarvan. So Dokla getting pretty aggressive. Might have had a chance to win that 1v1, I'm not sure, but... You know, with Acadian joining in, flashes in, hits the ultimate, that's more than enough to finish it off. So great job by him, being in the right place at the right time. Broken Blade now 
grabbing a lot of the early CDR. He has the Fiendish Codex as well as that Kindle yep. gem. He's closing in on level nine. That is really where a lot of people pinpoint Vladimir starting to really turn on. It becomes difficult to push him out of lane at that mm -hmm. point. And a huge play by TSM just to kind of squeak that in. Dardock had eyes on Akkadian. That was about the only time Akkadian wasn't in vision and they made it work into the top lane. So getting things back when they can. We're just short of a minute and a half on 10 minutes into the game here. 600 gold lead to TSM with a few kills and keeping the lanes not too high up, but the pressure good enough to stay up there in CS. Yeah, and you can actually see, you know, on the top side of the map in this top river, there's a really nice kind of line of vision that mm -hmm. the TSM is creating. There's no optic wards on this side of the map whatsoever, and they're trying to do that, you know, to give that freedom for Broken Blade and to make it so Dokla can't play as aggressive because he's not necessarily sure when someone else is coming up there to try to turn that fight around. Doesn't have too much vision himself. Mm. Feels comfortable though. He's like, he won't gank me this fast twice. <laughs> Never. They're pinging on to Dardock right now. They see him just over the wall of Wraith Camp, so he's gonna get himself out. Raptor Camp, wow. Going back. And we'll have one minute until stopwatches come up. Only seeing one on the bottom right side. Three for TSM actually, so expect the plays. Always seeing those in the TSM inventories as they know when they can use that power spike get themselves back in the game. And like you said, Azale, something might be around that mountain drake that comes up here. Yeah, I think I think they really would like to try to force some sort of early fight around this Draven. You know, he is level six now. You know, getting the cash in can make such a huge difference. He's sitting on 230-some you know, stacks. Uh, that is certainly a lot of additional gold if he can get that kill. Uh, it could kind of propel them forward in this game because TSM is happy to play this slowly, having such strong scaling, having great initiation for the team fight with J4 plus Galio, yep. Vladimir to amp double marksman damage, as well as the Jarvan flag giving attack speed to both those marksmen. You know, that is nasty late game synergy for the 5v5. So Optic is going to be feeling some pressure to really make things happen. Dokla back to top, just a few CS up. That wit's end for him is finished, so actually no teleport in. If there were to be a fight, Broken Blade would be able to enter, so they have to weigh the option of that as well, as it does seem like a little bit of love starts going towards bot side. And you can see, Dardock right now is actually down two levels on Akkadian, which is a pretty huge disadvantage, considering not that much has really happened. Uh, Dardock certainly will be hitting level 7 soon, and does just now on his camp, but Akkadian has been doing a good Locked job. He's cold as ice, man. <laughs> Hit the alts, you can be as far behind as you want, right? <laughs> exactly. And Dokla now showing off that wit's end, right? You know, in the extended trades, if you can stay on top of the Vladimir, you will win out on those. It's such a strong, efficient item in that 1v1 uh, against the Vladimir, giving you the early magic resist is going to make it a lot harder for Broken Blade to kind of fight back. And that early attack speed is going to be very strong in extended trades also. So Broken Blade is going to have to kind of manage the minion waves quite well. He wants to stay closer to his turret and not have to be pushed up. So what Doka's likely going to try to do is shove in the wave, have it bounce, and then have Broken Blade have to step forward to where he can look to try to all in it. Well, looks like they're going to get a bit of that friendship right now as Cadian's hovering the backside of Broken Blade. Crimson Rush almost up as well. It'd be good for the first attack, but Doka playing a bit safe. Puts a charge down. Nice defiance. It'll be all right. Yeah, I think he's going for this. Yeah, Akadian might go for the dive. Better. Cataclysm goes down. Throws out the ulti. Charges back and forth to try to deny the auto attacks. He gets a little bit of healing back, but it's not going to be enough. There's the stopwatch plays that TSM is waiting for. And they come out with another kill on Dokla in the top lane. That goes to Broken Blade as Optic start off the Mountain Drake. Yeah, fantastic job, honestly, using the early stopwatch there from Akkadian. They can fully dive onto it. Optic will respond with the Mountain Dragon, and now Crown up to the top side looking for a trade kill. Oh, this is going to be the pickup here, a little retribution for his teammate Dokla, and Crown picks up a second kill for himself this game. Getting the shutdown there as well, very big for Crown, but they will be sacrificing at least one turret plate here in the middle to do it, and this was a pretty obvious gank as Broken Blade is just running at Dokla all of a sudden, but the fact of the matter is he procs the phase rush, he knows he has stopwatch, he knows he has pool, so going forward, tanking as much damage as he can, then pulling up. It swaps over to Akkadian, but Akkadian has stopwatch. Broken Blade still had his stopwatch, so despite the fact that Dokla played it quite well, yeah. not a lot of opportunity to really fight back and get that kill. And you can see in the jungler comparison, Akkadian kind of mounds ahead already in this game. And we said he was tracked. Zardok had him in the first few instances in bot side jungle with Arrow and Biggs push and Draven and Tom Kench. And 
Once Acadian finds that opening, he takes off. Now, 0-0 zero, zero and 2 as he's gotten Broken Blade up and running, and they're going to be able to pick up Rift Herald. Yep, going to be able to grab that Rift Herald. It really does seem like two sides kind of splitting the map. For now, it has been TSM getting more, I think, out of this top side pressure that they've been putting down. And it's been about the bot side control for Arrow and Big. And what they have gotten kind of resulted in them getting a dragon. So objective kind of split across the map. But certainly, Optic, I don't think, are going to be feeling very comfortable with the position that they're in right now, uh, given that they are playing a comp, which is going to get outscaled. Start breaking down some of these turrets and find a way to a fight. You get some of these Draven Axes to cut people down and make sure that Rift Herald isn't going two tiers through from TSM. If they have anywhere they want to use that now, Acadian's going to start bringing it towards the bot side of the map. It looks like they're going to start putting a little pressure on the jungle. Crown wants more info. I'm not happy with just the CS in lane right now. That's honestly a nice little ward just over the edge of that Raptor pit right there uh, that they actually are able to kind of have that out of range of the pink ward over here. And they do suss out that they were probably on vision. Now Dokla, again, you can see how he wins these extended trades. But every time Broken Blade just gets back to his turret, he has the stopwatch, he has the pool available, and Acadian working his way back up perhaps towards the top side of the map is sitting in that red side jungle now. So Dokla's always having to be careful, and despite the fact that he's kind of stronger in that 1v1, he's the one who has two deaths. And that's patience. Broken Blade, youngest player in the LCS at 19, actually just hit that, I believe, in like January 17th or 18th mm. of his birthday. But he still has this mentality of, yes, there's times to go aggressive, but there's also times I have to sit back, allow the team to do things, even when my jungler is well behind the other top <laughs> laner. So just seeing his play style come and work with TSM so well has been pretty cool. Yeah, and, and I think Broken Blade, as you say, you know, he's such a young guy and he has a lot of room to grow and it's, it's going to be interesting to kind of track his progress as he's shown some incredible mechanical games and at times he has overreached, right? He has had those mistakes that have cost him. So seeing that development and, and watching him, you know, as he kind of spends his first season in the LCS is going to be very, very exciting. The champion pool he's put out <laughs> pretty crazy as well. Oh. Zven not feeling good under the blades of Arrow right now. Smoothie's gonna get a little more vision. They are covered down there. It's like a light bright of security, and Optic can see everything. Bjergsen's forced to clean up on mid, and it looks like there may be a party on the bot side, a quick distortion from Crown. And it looks like he's trying to just draw attention if Bjergsen's doing a bit. Yeah, for sure. So we'll see if, if they're gonna be able to get back down there. But TSM trying to maintain at least enough defensive vision to keep them safe. Uh, there's been such a a focus on that jungle side. Yeah. You know, there's both teams really fighting for vision. Optic really prioritizing getting vision on that side of the map and kind of not helping out Dokla as much, which has resulted in a couple of his deaths. It's also a tough position for Dokla to be in, given that he's playing a matchup where you have to play aggressive to actually win. You don't win by just farming against the Vladimir. You need to be diving onto him. But every time you do that, you're exposing yourself to a potential gank. So not having vision up there really is a limiting factor in his 1v1. Dive on Vladimir. At this point now, you're going to be finding a smoothie. <laughs> Pretty big entrance on that Galio. We haven't seen too much from the bot lane. As Sven and Smoothie are just scaling up. He does have that gauntlet. And he's charging up his Muramana now. Mm -hmm. say man. And they don't need to really get anything done aggressively, right? You know, I think a lot of where their power of these two picks for the TSM bottom lane is going to come is the team fights. Right, you know, Smoothie and Zven are going to be happy as long as they're defending the turret, as long as they are staying fairly even in CS, and they have certainly managed to do that. I think that bottom lane turret will fall eventually, but you know, it's 16 odd minutes into the game, yeah. not that big of a deal if they do lose it at this point. I think they have done their job well enough that TSM are going to be feeling very comfortable moving into this mid-game stage where Triforce is already done for Corky and their bottom lane already is on two items. They're going to be feeling good. Merc Tread's really helping Bjergs in here. Dardoch sitting on that pink board. May not like the result they get here. He's not gonna be crowd controlled into any situation that gets him killed, but they are gonna try to protect this mid lane turret. Dokla to push top. Teleports up if the team goes for anything, but Sven and Smoothie both on the inside track for Optic, Arrow, and Big. And TSM grab mid, and they're able to come down and get the ocean drink. Yep. Beautiful job at 17 minutes. Yeah, they grabbed the first turret for themselves, and despite the, all the kind of laning power that Optic did draft for, Optic will be able to trade back the bottom turret and potentially the top turret as well, as Dope Swing is working on that, you know, and should be able to get it. So, you know, two turrets for the one, but it is one turret being that mid lane turret, a very important one on the map, and also the dragon. And, and again, TSM are trying to kind of go even at this stage in the game. Uh, they are going to be happy as long as there is gold parity where it is 
the Optic who have more pressure to try to get things done. And you kind of feel like they may be forced into going into the 131, trying to have Aureli and LeBlanc in the side lanes and yeah. trying to pull the map apart because you really are not going to want to opt into a straight up 5v5 <laughs> uh, where Draven is likely just going to get dove on by all these members. That accelerates it for TSM. The entire team wants Optic to find a fight in this dog pile. Mm -hmm. Will they be able to spread out enough is the question. The vision has been good enough from what they've been putting in the side lanes. Now can Optic protect that, move it up, and as you're saying, get that 1-3-1 run running. Yeah, and, and also for TSM, you know, a lot of the criticism of TSM this year has been about these, these kind of mistakes in execution, these lapses in judgment where maybe someone gives up a kill that they shouldn't have or, or dives too far. And sometimes those can be revealed by a team playing split push. So we'll see, hey, can they play a common collective game, force that team fight that they are going to want with this composition and, and try to close it out pretty quickly? Fen is sitting on not too much. Everybody's actually still building their coffers right now after the last buy. As we said, Bjergsen working off of that Triforce. Not too much more for the team to really get a big fight off of. They're waiting for Optic to make a mistake, but this is something Optic has been kind of weeding out of their playbook is mistakes. They don't want to lose any of the early game leads that they can accrue just to one small mistake. They've let that second Drake go. Mountain was good enough for them. They've impacted two turrets. Now it's about getting a bit more forward and not being hesitant against TSM, which I think we've talked about Optic's leads before and how easy to see is visual. Sometimes you don't know you have the lead if it's accrued through a few lanes or a bit of a play or you're warding. And sometimes that's what you need to see to get ahead. Totally. It could be really hard to actually know at all stages. You've had Everyone has had those games where they're actually ahead in goal, but it feels like you're behind because the other team is maybe dictating the plays. Yeah. Or you feel like you're ahead because you're dictating the plays and you're actually behind. So, you know, it is something that is a very important skill to actually master. And we can see that Bjergsen down here on the bottom side he is being trailed by Akadian. They're hoping that Crown will go aggressive and they can look to make a play here. Because there's, you know, a couple different ways you can play against this STSM. You can see Aurelia is going to be splitting top, LeBlanc is splitting bot. So Akkadian either wants to try to force something, you know, you group and you force on the three-man squad, or yep. you try to pick off a side lane and then try to get something from that. So for now, Akkadian trying to kind of ghost and stay behind his own split pushers in case Optic ever grows aggressive and then he can punish them. Knight's Vow on Akkadian for Bjergsen. Link up already. He's going to grab red buff as well, so we can get a little more side lane protection and get himself out of trouble if they get on him with a slow. And he will wait. Very patient game for TSM here. Usually they're, they're activating a few fights that they want, but Optic is not giving them anything. And props to Optic, as I said before, here 20 minutes in, I think we're gonna have to start seeing teams kind of huddle up around these turrets, the last few standing in the outer ring. Yeah, and some of that is certainly compositional based in the way that TSM is playing, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna be happy to kind of wait and, and see what Optic is doing. You know, you're, you're gonna be ones feeling like your opponents are more oh, on yeah. that clock. You know, we saw how Monstrous Crown was yesterday on the Corky. If you let Corky get to, you know, three items, four items, he is gonna absolutely make you pay for that. And Dokla now maybe getting caught out. History repeats itself on the top side of the map. Dokla trying to go for the fight a little bit more this time, but he's definitely going down. It's Akkadian picking that one up. They rinse and repeat the top lane gank again. Yep, Akkadian tried this on the bot side with Bjergsen, couldn't catch Crown, goes straight up to the top side, does catch Dokla, which is gonna mean they're gonna lose their outer tower. And if you're losing, in that side lane, it's going to be very hard for this 1v1, this 1-3-1 to really be pulled off here for Optic. So Dokla has got to be careful, either needs more vision around him or to play more safely, unless he knows where Akkadian is. Ooh, nice <laughs> Crown gets himself out. A little scary there, but he'll be fine. And Big was there to devour if anything went too wrong as Arrow continues to farm up in that mid lane. Mm -hmm. Arrow and Zven just Farming it up. Over 600 stacks you can see on Arrow right now. You can't see the last number, but certainly looking like he has a lot to cash in here if he were able to ever get that kill. Sitting on two items plus the QSS. And also, likewise, for TSM, when you have such a good dive composition, Draven was already probably going to be your target. Now, if you kill him, you erase a lot of those passive stacks. That would be enormous. And they certainly have the composition to be able to do it. Mountain Drake looking tasty for TSM. Definitely eyes on Arrow. See if he cashes in on this one. We'll see how much cash he gets, especially if he takes somebody down like Bjergsen and get an extra bit of money on that. And good pressure from TSM and fight comp that they've been working with. 
He's gonna hold off Optic for now. Broken Blade going quite low. Dardock wants to get himself in a little bit closer as Big starts to pressure Bjergsen on the outside. Smoothies into the middle of the fight as Big looking to try and crowd control the rest of the team. Dardock forward as Dokla is now in a 3v1 situation. Up and down as Smoothie but is not gonna provide any help for Sven. Firing in from the outside, Acadian goes down the top near mid lane. And Bjergsen, they cannot get their shots in quick enough as Optic is just flashing around these fights. And they can go straight to Baron. This is 23 minutes in. They do have a Mountain Dragon. Acadian is down. Sven is very low HP with no teleport. We'll see if he can try to poke them off. Smoothie and Bjergsen already in the area. Sven in the mid lane trying to push that out. Some low health bars here on Optic, but we'll see if they go for the finish. You were saying a few small mistakes by TSM would set them back. Let's see if they can get it back now. Big devouring up one. Dokla stays alive as Big gets the gray health in. Bjergsen in the middle of the pit, but it looks like Optic's already on the run. They know the damage is coming in as well from Smoothie. They do pick up a kill onto Big, and it looks like they'll all get out with Baron. A great job by Optic to kind of route TSM there and pull the rug out from under him. Yeah, Crown even trading back a kill on Sven here. This is one more time. Broken Blade did not have vision of him. A good pool, but he's lost so much of his health early on into the fight. And then you can see up on the top side, this is Dogla TPing in onto the ward. Broken Blade has no pool, knowing that he is going to have the advantage in that side lane fight. And Acadian was diving back onto Arrow, but there was no follow up damage available. The Galio ult is not going in. The rest of the team yeah. is not there to actually follow up. You are not going to be able to take down that Draven as the solo tank J4. And that fight certainly very split for TSM and not how they wanted it to look. You want the Vladimir diving in at the same time as this Jarvan, the Galio following up, everything to be on the same page. And it felt like they should have perhaps bailed out once Broken Blade got chunked off, but they yeah. just still tried to overforce it. It's one of the few fights where you can say when the enemy alts first, mm -hmm. they win. Usually it's the team that alts second after kind of figuring out and then assessing the fight. So that was crazy. Thankfully for TSM, though, Arrow did not cash in. He was very close to doing so yep. on Acadian. He was not that. able to get that final hit. So still, a lot of extra gold could have been picked up by him there. And you can see some of these bounties starting to show up. You know, these members are certainly going to be targeted very heavily by the two teams. 1,250 gold available in bounties you know, for TSM to grab on the optic side. And you'd also be taking off so much gold in stacks that it's even really worth a lot more than that. And certainly for Bjergsen, a lot of the onus is going to be on him to carry. He is the strongest member on his team, has yeah. the most farm in the game, has those two kills, and almost on three items with the Corky. When he gets that IE, he is going to be able to light these squishies up. He's a playmaker. It's the reason all those trophies they go. In the pictures, they get big immediately. How much is the team going to do to save him? And is it going to be worth? Crown on the other side of the fight looking for the retreat kills. Damage onto Smoothie. Crown's in, tries to get Sven, but he actually gets damage across three. Not enough to kill one. In goes Acadian. There's the attacks. The burn is down. Crown gets taken out. Pearson picks that one up. It's going to be Draven picking up the cash arrow. Cash is in big onto Smoothie. Dardot goes down by Broken Blade. He's in the middle of the fight. Here comes Broken Blade for the double kill as Arrow gets himself out alive and he's gonna go spend that cash. Yeah, Dokla though just continuing to split. This is very similar to yesterday on the Yorick. If TSM is gonna force, he is not answering. He's saying, all right, you guys survive in the 4v5. I will get towers. I will get guaranteed gold. And that cash in was enormous for Arrow. He got 2,800 yeah. gold when he went back to base. Just ridiculous. He even had to like rebuy and buy his soul. He's like, what do I even buy? I got coupons. <laughs> That's so right. much money. <laughs> How do I spend it? Well, he's definitely getting a little extra for everybody on the team with that one. See how much power he can put in his pocket. We have Sorlux. He's going straight for the Infinity Edge buy on that. We'll see this fight one more time as it was all in for Big to start off on TSM. So. Yeah, very heavy investment onto Big, but he's able to get out of there pretty easily. Crown is in a good fank position. And then this Galio, no flash available, is isolated. And you can see you know, on the top side of the map, if you look at this mini map over here, he's running it down the side lane, looking to actually just take those turrets over there. And Arrow gets the cash in on the Galio, able to really get a lot out of this fight. So despite the fact that TSM does get more kills, Optic gets a turret on the top side and gets an enormous cash in. So it still goes into a gold positive fight for them. <laughs> Always finding a way to squeak it out in the end of the fight as well. Broken Blade on this Vladimir. Showing up from the top lane, getting a little bit of help from Acadian. And we see Crown trying to put up the fight now. Arrow stepping in with a little bit of that gold. Does get the Infinity Edge finish, mm -hmm. as I was pretty sure he wasn't far off after cashing in there. 
So we'll see these rapid-fire cannon shots really coming into play if he can hit the priority targets. Yeah, you get the right crit on one of these members, and it's pretty terrifying. Bjergsen, likewise, he's sitting at level 16, so max rank of the ultimate. Yep. He has the IE rapid-fire and the Triforce, so and you shoot out a rocket, that gives you your Triforce proc. If you can get a crit auto with the Sheen proc plus the rapid-fire and that IE, you will absolutely light someone up. So these guys have got to be very, very careful about how they're playing it out. Bjergsen has the potential to erase these squishies, but at the same time, not a lot of defense picked up to deal with this Draven for him. He's, you know, itemizing more towards the LeBlanc, which makes sense, but does mean yep. if he messes up, uh, he could get destroyed. Yeah, while well, they're sticking together here, a little 1v1 in the bot lane. Nice hit with a flawless duet for Dokla, going long range on that to get an upper hand as they go back and forth. So they have eyes on Dokla. I don't think we see Dardok, however, coming through the jungle just yet. Mm -hmm. Might have a clip on this side, but he's only gonna have Smoothie to engage on. Not the best target. Yeah, Dardok's certainly in a, in a pretty good spot here for any potential flank if TSM did push up, but as TSM is playing it safe, you know, they don't have a lot of vision on that side of the map, and Dardok also kind of trying to play towards Dokla's side. Ooh. You can see that Broken Blade doesn't know where the extra members are, so he is giving that respect over as well, and Crown is roaming down. They're gonna try to finish the turret and then potentially dive. Galio Alti coming in. They just make it a double cut out of this one, but wait, Acadian's also there. The Flag and Dragon misses the pop-up, but they get the Cataclysm kill going on to Dokla. Bjergsen over here to clean it up as well. Arrow's coming down just on the right side. Sven can't participate just yet. It looks like the retreat will be in order for Optic as they lose another member in big. Yeah, Optic just totally botched that. Yeah. One extra auto was needed on the turret. You know, TSM able to respond very quick with the Galio as well. And, you know, Arrow wasn't even coming down. Like, he wasn't with the team. He didn't have a way down to that fight. So now it should very easily be TSM going over to this Baron. There's still a long time on a couple of these members. The Baron is up 20 seconds on two members here from Optic. And... This may be them just giving over a Baron. Waiting for the ward over the wall. Seems like sweepers are the things that are down, and trinkets are already used. Down to 4,900 HP. Dardock 14, Acadian 14. Same on each side. Bjergsen with some big damage over the wall along with Sven. They are stopping Dardoch to see if they hop into steel. the pit. Brown wants in as well. Over the pit. It's going to be a hit from Sven that takes down Baron, and Optic is out quick. So they don't lose any members. A great push there by TSM to get the objective. Yeah, TSM really huge for them. Capitalizing on the mistake on the bottom side from Optic, getting a couple kills, grabbing the Baron. And that is a great way to be able to shut down the 1-3-1 one, one as well. When you have that Baron, you can group, you can shove it up yep. the mid lane and really force your opponents to respond because wave clear becomes so incredibly difficult with all those Baron buffed minions. Rift Herald was theirs in this play that kind of seemed like Dokla was just having his way with bot turret completely flipped into TSM's favor. Yeah, Dokla needed the one extra auto. You know, another turret shot does come in. He doesn't actually finish that fully off, but TSM has responded so quick. Even if he did actually finish the turret, not sure it would have made the difference. Big comes in with the Tom Kench ult, but I mean, that was essentially just a, an inting ultimate there. After, after your top laner is already dead, you don't have your Draven there. It's going to be a, a lost fight, right? And they needed to perhaps just recognize the situation a bit faster, except that Dokla is going to go down for a turret, and then in the 4v5, maybe you can defend the Baron. Right. When they lose more members, there's no way they can really hold that off, and they were forced to try to take a steal, which they couldn't get. TSM now snapping back at Optic. Top lane has an outer turret. Bot lane just lost its second tier as TSM's now knocking on the front door of Optic's base. Crown doesn't really have a way to get around to the backside now. He's only looking at members that get right out of his way. Dokla's here to farm the front side of the minions as well. Akkadian running it down mid. <laughs> yep, just pushing those minions in. And you have all your carries elsewhere, so everyone oh. from Optic goes over to try to respond to that, and then Akkadian, full tank Jarvan, can just walk up, buff up those minions, and still pressure a turret by himself. And TSM likely going to be able to knock down this turret very quickly. It's going to go down on this wave, and then it's full retreat for Optic. That means you're pretty much going to have to seed the inhibitor. We'll see if they do elect a fight. Oh, seeing right through that play of Crown Smoothie had a taunt prepared. And it looks like they're going to get some good damage on and force him to the fountain. He leaves his clone out to be a nuisance. And imagine this push happening the other way. Optic has had two straight waves 
pounding into that top side turret on TSM's side, but nobody's been there to even pick it up or push it in. And TSM's able to say and play. The ultimate coming out from Dardock just misses as Broken Blade takes the front end of damage. They love that. The Vladimir's just gonna heal back up. Dardock looking for possibly another way back in to help his team as now everybody's on the retreat turning tail. And it's gonna be Inhibitor that follows next on their side. TSM is just too strong, 32 minutes in. Yeah, there's just no, almost no way for Optic to actually approach a straight up 5v5 team fight when TSM already has their battle lines established, already has everyone grouped up. And yeah. you can see, it was a good ult from Dardock, just barely, not in range. It did hit the slow on Bjergsen, mm -hmm. but not able to quite actually get that stun onto him. But even if it can, connects, I'm not sure that you can actually dive through Galio and all these members when there's so much added damage and then you're diving into a Vladimir who is going to counter engage and alt your whole team so tough position that Optic is in now but at least the Baron buff will be expiring. Let's see 15 seconds on this Baron power Baron power play to go off. It looks like they're still going to be strong enough to push whatever they need towards the top side. Pink wards and quite a few of the inventory is here to be moved up and protected for TSM. His arrow continues to farm. He's already trying to get a bit of armor pen in, knowing that TSM has just been able to build and surpass the point that Optic has been at in the mid game. Yeah, Cadian stacking a lot of that armor there certainly is going to be someone he's got to deal with. Smoothie as well, picking up some armor for himself. So he knows he can't really run through those members. He has to deal with that front line, and you can see how much of a problem these waves are gonna be. TSM is grouping up five men top. They're looking to try to get this triple and hip and close out the game. And these supers are gonna be such a problem. You can see them on the mini map right here in the mid lane, pushing up there, pushing up in the bottom lane as well. That is gonna be the, the issue for Optic. When those waves arrive at their base, they're gonna have to send members down to deal with them or risk losing their Nexus turrets. And when you're two to three members clearing those, those waves, well, TSM is gonna try to press in and take down this final inhibitor. Just a few hits once Sven starts to hit it. Already about a fifth of the turret's health goes down with just one W and auto attack. TSM putting the final touches on, waiting for the minions to come in through the bot side of the map, TSM. Wanting to see more of this towards the end of the split. So far, eight and five, looking for nine and five after this with Golden Guardians and CLG next week, Clutch and Liquid in the final week. So definitely wins they can pick up and then the challenge of Liquid at the end to see if it's all paid off. Here, the final inhibitor turret going down to see if this work has paid off. 35 minutes in, TSM's in Optic's base to stay. Yeah, I mean, if Optic's not gonna fight in that third inhibitor, you're essentially just seeding the game at that point. That takes it from two supers per wave to six, with two coming down each lane. They do make the call to just back off, they're and they're going to hope for some sort of miracle play later on, perhaps. Maybe try to steal a Baron, try to steal something, and, and turn it around. But I don't even know if they have enough wave clear to really deal with all the minions plus the members from TSM when they walk in with all those supers. So we'll see if they're able to actually pull anything off here. Not anymore. You need arrow everywhere, basically. Yeah. Start clearing these minions, especially if they're going to have a Baron buff, which comes up in 15 seconds. Elder Drake in six. They may be able to kind of yo-yo TSM back and forth, but mm -hmm. TSM's going to be able to pick and choose whatever fight they want. I mean, this is the first wave with the double supers. You can see them going out across the map as Crown would love to get a pick on Bjergsen. Oh, Optic is coming. Ultimate? Just the auto. No Sejuani ult. Maybe thought Bjergsen could see him, and they wanted it for the bigger fight. They are going to be losing Elder to the bot side. It'll take a bit. For the minions heading into the base, Optic needs to decide now, do they pressure or do they minion clear? They're gonna try to rush the Baron, I think is, is what they're trying to do, but they're gonna make the call to back off as there's so many minions in the base. Bjergsen's gonna TP in, they're gonna try to look for an end. We'll see if Optic can turn this around on him. Smoothie was able to flex muscles over at Baron, pushes him off by himself. You have Acadian coming in as well. The TPs do as well get Optic back to the base, corral yeah. the enemy in, make sure they aren't doing anything you don't want them to do. And this is what happens when you give up that triple inhib. You're just corralled by these minions. Yeah. It's full-time wave clear duty. So Dardock is out on the map. It's up to him. It's going to be perhaps a one-man mission trying to steal this away, but he doesn't even have vision in the pit. He knows it's extremely unlikely. He will just head back to base. But now it is an eldered up, barrened up, three inhibs down TSM. And this is pretty much impossible to defend. I'd like to try. No. Go for it, Riff. <laughs> 
reason I'm not on that stage. <laughs> Crown tries to do something before they get into base, and yeah, he hits Broken Blade, but it's only going to tickle once he gets a few transfusions off and gets healed back up. Inhibitors are on the menu for TSM if they're not just straight to that first Nexus turret that is already beaten and battered. Damage goes down. The flag is there for KD to give everybody a little bit more. And Dardox into the middle of the fight. He's trying to find a back line, but he cannot find any line right now. Ultimate from Dokla and TSM isn't even worried. They go on to Dokla. Damage goes through, but Sven's going to miss one Mystic Shock. Smoothie just wants to join the party. They want to use their ults. They haven't been able to all game. 11 to 6, 38 minutes in. And TSM is making quick work of the rest of Optic's base as they scatter about. Looking for the shots. Broken Blade up front. First game on Vladimir for TSM this time. And he played it well for the team. Help from Acadian in that jungle as they get the win over Optic Gaming. Going to be able to close this one out. 38 minutes and four seconds for TSM as they claim the victory over Optic and felt like they were in control pretty much the whole way through. Optic did have you know, a couple big moments. Crown picking up five kills certainly was a highlight. Optic was able to get the big cash in on the Draven, but they were never able to really make good on the lane advantages that they drafted for. You know, picking up all of these kind of bully lanes, these, these matchups they're supposed to win in isolation, it never really came to fruition for them. They were never able to get a big enough advantage. And that just meant TSM was going to run the show when it came time to 5v5. Yeah, I, right after that first play in the mid lane, I was like, all right, here we go. Mid lane, Crown, <laughs> Bjergsen, let's go. And then a lot of just buddy system between Broken Blade and Acadian towards that top side. And we kind of mentioned coming in, we're like, wow, Dokla and Aurelia, Dardock and Sichuani, that's nasty. We're going to see these two. Oh, no, all right, not so much. Yeah, I mean, they certainly drafted for a very strong 2v2. Uh, but they elected to play more around the bottom side of the map, trying to get those dragons. Uh, and Dokla didn't have vision around him, was caught out a number of times yeah. by that pairing. Acadian and Broken Blade certainly looking good in that regard. And despite the fact that every time we saw the isolated 1v1s, Dokla was kind of winning those fights, you know, pressuring, so pressuring the Vladimir. Broken Blade never gave him enough space to ever kill him and yeah. always waited for the correct times. Him and Acadian pairing up and looking very good in this game. Just enough to make it look good, the extra step, and then they would bite back from the side of TSM. So Pastry Time is now standing by for a Winter's interview with TSM Smoothie. Thank you very much. I am here with Smoothie. 2-0 for TSM on the weekend, which must feel good. But I know that there was a lot of expectations, as always, for TSM. How are you feeling kind of about the, the way you guys are playing and maybe the cleanliness of the games this weekend? I think we've been getting behind too much. Um, I think we play really, really hard to execute team comps, and we just rely on our individual skill to kind of close out these games, but we didn't really play so well, and yeah, this week has been pretty hard for practice for us. And I guess in that case, when it comes to keeping your top three spot and challenging, of course, for those top two spots, moving in towards playoffs, what are the changes or things that you guys will be looking to implement as you move into the last few weeks of the season? I think just being able to play more champs and different styles, I think we've cemented ourselves as like a 1-3-1 you know, one, one team. We've been doing that a lot this split, but I think we can play different styles and perform really well, even if we're, I guess, not used to it. So, yeah. And my last question, uh, you have Golden Guardians first up to start off next weekend, a team that has been surprising quite a few people. Uh, what are your expectations for that matchup? Well, GGS beat us last time, but I think that we were not so good in the first couple of weeks. Um, I think that next week will be a lot better. I think this week, or this week was probably our hardest week. We had really bad practice. Broken Blade was actually sick for the majority of the week. So um, we couldn't get really good practice with our five players. And I think next week, once everyone's back on their feet, I guess we're going to have a lot better practice. Well, still 2-0. Congratulations on your wins here this weekend. We are going to throw it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. TSM moving to 9-5 and five after a pretty contentious victory there against Optic. Uh, both teams having opportunities, uh, I would say, to come away with the victory. But I want to take a look at team compositions here. And Mark, when you look at these two sets of five champions as they are uh, rostered out, what should be the game plans heading into this for each team? I mean, for the side of Optic, you have a pretty clear 1-3-1 one, one with a lot of early game dominance, both with the Draven and LeBlanc. And so you want to go in and affect all these lanes. And so you have a lot of different lanes you can choose from. On TSM side, you have two pretty uninteractive lanes in the mid and the bot lane, more focused on scaling and team fighting. So, of course, TSM wants to go top. So TSM clearly wants to go top. Optic can go anywhere. 
And yet, so where should Austin they go? They should go then? top and they fight the 2v2. Top. My issue here is I think that you're, you have all this early game dominance with your lanes, but your jungler is not early game dominant. Your jungler is a Sejuani. Maybe in the leads would have been really nice. And so Dokla as a result, he's having to lane against a Jarvan. Crazy early game with a Vladimir. He's not getting any help. Yeah, but this is the thing is you can go make other things happen. Like you can fight a 2v2 top. You can be there to cover a dive like this when it comes in because you know the only place that Kadian can go is top. And they were never there to turn these plays around, try and help them out. Uh, and this was kind of what gave uh, TSM their foothold in this game because if you were able to keep this lane even while your other two lanes were getting ahead on their own just by being more early game focused champions, you might be able to, to take this game. Right, and I believe we had a start stat earlier in the day that showed that Dokla has the most isolated death. Oh, yeah. And if you're curious, he also has the lowest ward permit out of any top laner as well. Mm. And those seem to be connected. And like, to be fair, one of the ganks was a lane gank. However, you know, if you need help getting vision, you need to tell your team, hey, I need help getting ward. So just ask for people Right, again, help. that's another thing that the jungler could help you out with if you are able to make that request. Of course, he had, I think, uh, Ford, three Ford S uh, pretty early on in the game there to hand over some advantages to Broken Blade and again give them some of that team fight power that will let TSM contest later down the line. I do think that's a difficult thing to do when you're coming into a new team and you're tr kind of learning that as a laner you do have access to tell your jungler, hey, I need you to do this for me. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously the jungler can do the same thing for the laner. And if you're not confident with your team, comfortable communicating, like I literally need you to do this for me, then you're just not going to ask for it. You're going to start dying. And especially in a game where we're saying, you know, mid wants the jungler and bot wants, jungler wants to, or Draven wants to snowball his lane. LeBlanc wants to snowball her lane. So Dardoch's probably getting pulled all over the map at this point. And so right. I don't envy his position, but it was still strategically, I have to say, probably should have gone top more. Yeah, without a doubt. Of course, this didn't stop Optic from picking up some kills and eventually securing a Baron buff for themselves. So while things were going awry in the top lane, here's some of the good. Right, and this fight started off with a huge chunk onto Broken Blade. I'm surprised TSM is still trying to take this fight at this point. Their carry top laner is literally out of the fight. It's the only person that The guy who's gotten all the kills. Right, and he's not even a part of this fight. So TSM taking this fight for, I believe, an Earth Dragon is definitely not worthwhile. This is one of the situations where you have to say, hey, I got chunked out, I don't think we can fight. Yeah, yeah, it goes from, you know, losing a neutral objective, Mountain Drake, oh well, to Baron's gone now, and we might start losing this game. Right, Baron is picked up by Optic. Now let's see what they do with it, because these last two weeks, we've really been hammering what is it the teams are doing to take that global advantage like a Baron and snowball to a victory, and here, Optic dropped the ball. The biggest issue is Optic is fighting with a teleport disadvantage here. You have a split pusher top set, and they're already committed to the objective. I mean. By the time this already this fight has already happened, it's already way too late. You blundered your Baron, to be honest. And I think we both agreed that the way to play this is push first, take advantage of getting towers, and then fall back into the objectives. Right, and something I want to call out, I, I gotta say this is on Dokla for being top lane in the first place. So when you have an objective spawning and you're trying to split push, you want to split push on the objective, like that side of the map, if you don't have TP. So once they got that Baron and saw a Dragon was spawning, Dokla should be going bottom and the rest of them should be going mid. So that way that they actually have pressure and five people on the same side of the objective. And he's just not there. From there, you collapse into the red side jungle, drop your wards as you retreat back to the Dragon. Cool, now we've got vision and control over the jungle to safely secure that objective. I mean, you can play it a lot of different ways. Right. You know, like Crumbs is saying, you have Baron buff for a limited amount of time. Using that to get vision control around a Drake and like kind of have a little footsie game is not the most effective use of Baron to begin with. So, you know, they have a lot of different ways they can do it, and they just chose one of the worst ones. It's like a yeah. funnel. Bad choices. I was like, ah, we'll take that <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> uh, that one let's looks... talk about uh, TSM, though, in the victory, uh, as well as, uh, you know, outside of it holistically. Uh, Smoothie mentioned they didn't have the greatest week of practice, and this is yet another game where they were at a time behind and had to kind of climb back into it, as we've seen uh, either before or again. I'll refer back to that C9 game where they had the lead and threw it back, and so still definitely plagued with some issues but solidly a top three team here in North America how are we feeling about their prospects of challenging Cloud9 and TL moving towards the postseason right so Optic had a lot of bunders this game but however once TSM did get the lead in that game they like snowballed it and basically won from that point out they 
I gave them the lead to be fair, but once they got that lead, the game was like in their hands. I mean, they were expected to fall behind just based off the draft, like we're saying, much more early game in the side of Optic. They didn't need to make that mistake around Dragon, but they recovered pretty well, all things considered. I do really like TSM's drafting so far because it always gives you the opportunity to, we have a way to punish a mistake if we see it. We mm -hmm. have a way to scale, let our carries shine. Like The tools are always there, so it's always a matter of execution, which some teams don't even give themselves a chance. I really don't agree with the optic draft. I really think an Elise would have been better where you just all in early game. You have a jungler that can legitimately be in all three lanes very early on, and maybe that's the way to snowball a game as opposed to banking on late game where now you've got AD carries with a QSS. Forget about engaging. Well, Coach Zix in the driver's seat there for TSM, so good on him for securing a team composition that allowed TSM to fight through towards the W. As we go to break, vote in chat for this week's artistic challenge for LCS Cooldown, where Bang and Onda will use Play-Doh to sculpt the champions that you choose. So spam chat before 100 Thieves versus Cloud9.